Yeah, I can't give you too much information. Uh, he, he obviously uh, dislocated his hip in that incident yesterday, so um, he's, he's in hospital. Uh, looks like he'll have an operation tonight. Um, until they operate, we don't really know the full extent of, of the injury or the severity of it, but uh, um, we'll wait and hear from them about what what happens. But he's, uh, he's, he's in good spirits. I mean, it's disappointing for him because he had such a terrific pre-season and he was just starting to hit his straps. So, it's a really, really unfortunate incident for, for Sam, um, but you know we'll, we'll treat it once we know the full extent of the injury. We'll you know we'll put plans in place then. Yeah. You would think so. That, that's your assumption, but but again, you don't really know until until the surgeons have a look at it and see the full extent of, of the injury. But uh, you know we're expecting that. You know, common sense says that he'll miss a. Uh, a fair, a fair chunk of footy, but how long that is, we're just we're just uncertain at this point. Have you ever heard of an injury like this before? No, I think it's it seems fairly rare. Um, you know, from what we've been told, it's uh, it doesn't happen often. So, um, yeah, it was it was uh, really unfortunate for him. In the long term planning with Sam as part of the forward line, is that correct? Yeah, have not just going to put you out. Obviously, probably won't play again. Um, look, yeah, it creates opportunities for others. I mean, we aren't. We aren't set on whether we're going to play three tall forwards or whether we're going to play two two talls and you know and four smaller players. So um, you know Jack Leslie's um, he's, he's a tall defender, but you know it uh, gives him opportunities. Um, certainly um, you know Dan Curry is a, a, a played well in the ruck yesterday uh, for, for Pew, so he's also trained a little bit forward. So there's opportunities for maybe him if we ever wanted to play that third tall. Um, there, you know, so look, it, it, it disrupts your preparation, there's no doubt, and it, and it takes away a player from your ability to be able to mix things up, so, um, you know, that's a given, uh, but, but it just creates opportunities for other players to maybe fill in and um, step up and fill in that void. You mentioned uh, he's in good spirits, you know, obviously when you've got these long-term injuries, mostly it's like an ACL or a knee and other people have been through it, how do you mentally get him through something that maybe no one else has ever been through and he doesn't have someone that support if someone hasn't been through it. Yeah, well, fortunately, we've got, um, you know, sports psychologists um, in-house that, you know, that are, that are capable of being able to, to help our players through those sort of situations. So, you know, as coaches, we're not experts in that area, so we rely fairly heavily on, uh, you know, on our, our, our psychologists and, um, you know, they, and he's got a terrific support network around him, his family. Um, his girlfriend and obviously the footy club. So, you know, it, it, it's it's a tough situation. It's a tough time for a, for a player to to ever miss any extended periods of time because footy's what they love doing and that's what they're here for. So, but but you know we'll support him as much as we can. And he's he's got a great strength of character, uh, Sam. You know, so we're confident that uh, you know that he'll he'll be okay sort of mentally from from where he's at. What was the feeling when it went like when it happened amongst the coaches? Was it a bit of a not, not again, like after all the stuff you had to go through last um, season? Yeah, well, not really. I mean, we were, we were a bit unsure as to what the uh, the injury was at first. And when you see someone go down and spend that much time on the ground, you you know, lots of things go through your head. You know, has he done an ACL? Has, has he broken a leg or is it an ankle? Those sort of things go through your head. But, you know, experience tells us not to jump to any conclusions. So we just waited for the feedback from, from our medical staff at ground level and, and that sort of stuff. So, but injuries... We accept injuries are just a part of the game and you have no control unfortunately over what happens when they're out on the ground so we've had a terrific pre-season you know i think it's been well documented that we've had uh, big numbers on the track and look we're still uh, really confident that you know our list's in a really good spot going forward this is an unfortunate you know incident that we that we couldn't control but you know hopefully we'll be able to deal with it you know given that we've got so many players available Lynch and Matera both okay? Or? Yeah, they look okay. We haven't, again, haven't had uh, um, feedback from our Medicaid yet, but they, it looks, they look only minor bumps. So they, they, you know, I would say they'll be okay. How do you see the performance of the backline group? A couple of new faces down there, Jack Bowes, Braden Fiorini. Yeah, two young players obviously uh, got an opportunity to play down there. They're both terrific young men. They're really coachable and willing to learn. And, 
you know, we had some feedback from our, our senior defenders today that, you know, they were terrific. You know, they, they listened, um, they competed really strongly, which is, you know, as a young player down there, that's, that's the first thing you want from them. You know, it builds trust from your teammates, is that ability to compete and dig in. And, you know, they both do that really well. They naturally compete really well. Um, so it's new to them because, that, you know, Braden's a, an inside mid and, and Bozy's played a lot of forward mid. So, you know, to play as a defender in a, uh, you know, albeit a JLT series pre-season game, AFL footy, um, it was a new experience for them, but we're really pleased with the way they came through. There seems to be some real depth coming through as well, like with the Trent, uh, Harps, those sort of boys still come back in that yep. back line, Jack as well. Yeah, yeah, there's some pressure on, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, and even our ability to be able to play, you know, Pierce Hanley back there if, if we need to at different times. You know, David Swallow's coming back from a major long-term injury, so he's also spent some time as a half-back um, in previous seasons. So you're right, there's, there's some real depth there that you know, allows us to be able to um, experiment a little bit, but, but to be able to throw players around as well. You could probably say there's a bit of depth in the midfield too with those new faces that they did yesterday for the club. Yeah, look, Will Brody's a young player. Um, Mickey Barlow, you know, again, is, you know, he, he was a, a target for us, you know, from uh, Fremantle. He's trained really well and he's a big, hard body with lots of experience at a, at a, a really good club. So, um, yeah, it's, it's something that we missed last year, midfield depth, and, you know, it, it certainly gives you lots of options. Yeah, look, we, it, it's a decision that the AFL make, and we fully support that. I, th I think for, for, for the growth of the game and to take it to, to the community, I think it's a real positive. Um, you know, again, I think, you know, injuries occur um, no matter where you play. And, you know, I think due diligence was, you know, was followed through on with all that sort of stuff. It's certainly not my area, but as a footy club, I think we fully support the AFL's intention to take it to the community. Rocket was a bit frustrated last night with the treatment that Lynch was was getting. It's, you know, when he's now he's now become one of the best key forwards in the competition, he's going to get that you know focus every week. Is that getting through the frustration a big key for him this season? Yeah, look, uh, you're right. He's yeah he, he's become one of the best tall forwards in the comp, no doubt. So you know he, he, it garners more attention from from opposition defenders. Um, you know we we just all we ever want to see um, you know is is that the forwards get a get a fair fair go and. To, to be able to attack the footy without being scragged or held on to. So I think, uh, you know, Rocket was obviously just voicing his uh, discontent uh, somewhat, but, you know, certainly Tom will find his way through that, there's no doubt. But again, we just want to make sure that, you know, that they're given equal opportunity to, to have a run and a line at the footy. You called it WWE wrestling last night. <laughs> Is that how you describe it? Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit, you know, but, but uh, again, you're, you're asking me and I'm the defensive coach, so I don't mind seeing the defenders being able to make it a bit tougher for the forwards. So it, it's all about a balance, you know, we've got to make sure that we give both the forwards and the defenders equal opportunity to be able to compete. A major injury always caused a little bit of spirit down here among the team. How are the boys going? How are they going? No, really positive. You know, look, they're a really tight group. Um, they're all really good mates. And they feel for Sam, there's no doubt about that. Um, they've given Sam a lot of support, you know, text messages and phone calls last night and this morning. So they'll, they'll rally around him, there's no doubt. But in saying that, I still think, you know, they're professionals and they understand that injuries, um, you know, they, they go with the territory. So um, it, it, they're still really positive about, you know, where we're at. Our pre-season's been terrific. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll approach... We'll approach uh, Mackay with the same positive attitude that we approached the game yesterday. Will there be any new faces? Yeah, we should do. I mean, uh, the balance that we have is, is we're trying to we're trying to get the team to gel and and mould and get some synergy. So we want to play, you know. And Rocket went on record as saying that we want to play, um, you know, our, our our best team together as as best we can. But you've also got to be able to balance that with being able to um, prepare each individual player. And so some of, some of our um, players who possibly could be in our best team weren't ready yesterday. You know, Gary Ablett wasn't quite ready, Jared Lyons wasn't quite ready, Jack Martin. So, you know, um, we might see Pete Wright play this week. You know, he, he's been close to being ready to play in his preparation. Jack Martin's really close to playing as well. So we'll bring probably those two in. We may, we haven't even had match committee, so it's hard to tell, but we may rest a couple of the, uh, the more senior boys that played big minutes yesterday. So trying to get a balance between, you know, the, 
the, the, the macro look at our best team um, as opposed to what's best for the individual player. That's our that's our challenge and our what we're looking for in the next in the next week. I'd be fair to say that probably by JLT three that we'll be looking to play as close to our best side in preparation for round one as we can. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it's a long pre-season. There's no doubt about that. Players have been playing. Um, you know, uh, we call it match simulation. They've been playing against each other quite a bit over the pre-season. So yesterday was great for them to play against uh, an opposition. Um, you know, and Brisbane showed some really good signs under their new coach. So um, yeah, they're ready. It's really it's it's exciting. You know, with with the season approaching, we want to be able to. You know, we want to be able to um, gain some real respect in the competition. So that's what we're searching for. That's what we're training for. It gives us a chance to, to put some of that into, into action.